We all know scuba gear is expensive, but what if you could make your own? Today we're talking about 3D printed dive gear, so stay tuned. Okay, so 3D printing might not be the most cost-effective way to kit yourself out for diving. But if you're looking for a piece of equipment that's so specialized that no one even makes it yet, a 3D printer can be your best friend. And the best part is that 3D printer prices are getting lower and lower and lower. You can get a basic 3D printer for under 200 bucks, and I've seen the Creality Ender 3, which is a lot of people's first 3D printer, I've seen them as low as $100 on sale. So if you're not familiar, 3D printing is additive manufacturing, meaning that it melts plastic and layer by layer keeps piling it up until you are left with an object. The technology has actually been around since the 80s, believe it or not, but it was a little bit cost prohibitive for your average hobbyist to be able to afford. And when the patents ran out for the original 3D printers in 2008, people went crazy. And now, here we are today with tons of 3D printer options out there, and the technology just keeps advancing more and more. They get cheaper and cheaper and better and better, which is great for us. Not to mention they keep getting more and more user-friendly, which is great for me. <laughs> I bought a 3D printer because I do so much custom work on my own dive gear. It just made sense for rapid prototyping and even functional parts. You can make all kinds of stuff, like zoom gears for your camera lenses, hardware, scooter parts, scooter mounts, spools, rebreather stuff, you name it. You can make just about anything as long as it can be made out of plastic. Although there are some limitations and we'll get into those. I've got a few different examples of parts that I've printed. One of them is a Goodman handle for the Sofer and SD-01. This is a really cool dive light. It's like 90 bucks, it's pretty cheap, super powerful, burns for a long time on uh, the medium setting, which I believe is 2000 lumens, get like three and a half hours out of this thing. And that's a real burn time, not what's stated on there. So the problem is it has this rotary switch to turn it on and off, and it doesn't clear most Goodman handles. So kind of had to manufacture, not manufacture, but model and design my own mount for it. And then I just added it onto a pre-existing STL file uh, for a Goodman handle, and I'm good to go. Man, good me. Another thing that prints really easily are spools, especially when they're designed like this. This one is designed to print in two pieces, so you don't need any support material. And then there's an inner sleeve and an outer sleeve here, and little interlocking tabs to keep the whole thing pretty rigid. It honestly holds itself together pretty well just with friction, but adding a little glue, this thing is strong as hell. It's really awesome. I can't wait to use it in the water. Another one that I really wanted to make was uh, kind of based off of the Revo Loop Dryer STL that's out there. You can find those uh, those files online. I'll put a link in the description, but I kind of made a similar one here, but this isn't for drying the loop, loop hoses. This is for drying the counter lung on the KISS Sidewinder. So water tends to get stuck down in here, moisture of any kind, and if you pack, I mean, it's not so bad when you're diving it every day, but when you pack this thing up and you leave a bunch of, or even a little bit of moisture in there, it tends to get pretty funky, pretty nasty. So we want to get all that moisture out of there before we pack it away. So we've got this guy, which interfaces with a little plug in here. It's just a friction seal and it pulls air through the counter lung with this Noctua fan. It's gotta be a Noctua, cause I'm worth it. And it dries out the inside of the counter lung. So we'll leave this on there for an hour or so and I come back and it's bone dry. So I can pack it away without worrying about uh, this thing getting me sick later because there's something nasty growing inside of it. It's gross. Keep your loop clean, people. Now, one drawback to 3D printing is it can be pretty difficult to make watertight parts. 3D printed parts tend to be porous and they also tend to be kind of imperfect with the layer adhesion. So it's pretty difficult to get something to print so perfectly that it can keep water out. Like it can be done, but the time you have to spend to make it work can be prohibitive. 
but I plan on making this work in a future video. I wanna try to make like a 3D printed backup light or something like that. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that in the future because I'm gonna make a ton more uh, 3D printing videos. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments so that I can see what you guys wanna know about 3D printing and dive gear. Any of the models for the items I talk about this video, if I didn't make it, then I'll put a link in the description to give credit to the, the creator. If I made it and you want that STL file, then you can find it on my Patreon, including the Sidewinder counter lug dryer. Now, when I started looking at 3D printers last year, I had no idea how steep the learning curve was gonna be. I mean, I knew there was gonna be a lot to learn, but I thought I'd watch a few videos on YouTube and I'd have it pretty much down pat. Not really the case. There is a lot to learn, especially when you're just choosing your first 3D printer. The most important thing being, what materials do you want to print with? What filament do you want to print with? I knew that I wanted really strong, functional parts. So strength, it's a must. I gotta have it. So that means I needed to print with stronger filaments. PLA is definitely the most common uh, 3D printing filament out there. It's probably the easiest to work with. Um, and it's actually, honestly, pretty strong and fairly rigid. So PLA is great. The only problem with PLA is that it doesn't hold up to certain environmental stresses as good as some of the other filaments, like UV, which is bad because all my diving parts are gonna be used in the outdoors, so they're not gonna last very long in the sun. So we needed to use something else. The next most common type of filament is probably ABS. Back in the early days, they were using ABS all the time. Uh, but now PLA tends to be what most people are using. ABS, however, is a bit more resilient, so you can have more durable items. And there's another version of it sort of called ASA that has even better UV resistance. So that is what I'm using for my Goodman handle here. This stuff is very strong and I've been using it in the ocean and I haven't had any problems with it breaking down from sun or having any problems with the water. ASA is also what my T-handle is made out of on my scooter and that thing is strong as hell. So you know it's a good strong material. But I wanted more, more strength, more power. <laughs> I wanted the hardcore stuff like nylon and polycarbonate. That meant I needed more things, things like a high temperature extruder, a high temperature bed, an enclosure to help control the ambient temperature around the print. After weeks of exploring various 3D printer models, I kept coming back to a recommendation from a guy on Reddit. He said I should go with the Chitty X Plus, and if I pronounce that wrong, I'm very sorry. That's this guy right here. The X Plus is designed to handle beefy and demanding filaments right out of the box. So far, I'm a huge fan, but keep a lookout for my review in the future because I'm, I'm definitely gonna be doing a review on this printer. And I'm sure I'm gonna put out something like a lessons learned video and talk to you guys about all the mistakes that I've made along the way and help you avoid them, hopefully. Speaking of mistakes, it's really important to treat 3D printing as a hobby because you're gonna make mistakes over and over again. It's a trial and error type of process and when you finally do get that print just perfect, it is so rewarding. But if you think this thing's gonna spit stuff out as easy as your garden variety printer or copy machine, you're in for a rude awakening. It takes a little bit of work. But to be honest, it's really not all that hard. There's even a bunch of free models available online, so you don't really even have to model anything. You can just download a file, run it through your slicer and get all the settings tweaked, throw it into your printer and boom, you're good to go, provided the settings are right. <laughs> and with software out there like Tinkercad, CAD is getting more and more accessible every day. It's not all that hard to use. You can teach yourself. I've printed all kinds of stuff for diving. Some of the stuff I make myself, some of it I download directly off Thingiverse or Thangs.com, uh, whatever website you prefer, Colt3D, and I just download them and print them. So it's honestly really not all that hard to get into it. I plan on doing a whole lot more videos about 3D printing, so get ready for this thing to be a regular fixture on the channel. <laughs> we'll be talking about the best filaments to use for underwater application and which types of filaments fit which types of parts the best. And I'm thinking we're also gonna be comparing 3D printed parts to parts manufactured in a more traditional way, like injection molding or uh, stuff taken down on a lathe or whatever. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see and I'll get to work. Well, this is definitely a different type of video. This is a, a bit of a departure from what we normally do on this channel, but I wanna do more stuff like this. I wanna do more experiments and I wanna do more creating stuff and advancing the sport of diving. That's really what I want for this channel. So hopefully that interests you. Anyway, thanks so much for diving with me today and I'll see you 
in the water.